Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stefan Never Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome to another sub-sub segment of fictional women around the world and further sub-segment around the galaxy and further sub-segment Star Wars specifically. Um, and yes, there were two this month because it's a big Star Wars month. As this comes out, it's the eve of the anniversary of A New Hope. 45 years, I believe. And I actually bought, Samantha, I bought a magazine. What? I I was checking out. I went to go get groceries today and there was a magazine that was all about Star Wars. I was like, okay, oh. well, I'm buying this. <laughs> Immediately had to, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was embarrassing because I was like wearing a Star Wars shirt and had my Star Wars mask. <laughs> I was like, I will purchase this <laughs> Star Wars magazine, please. <laughs> um, That's about right. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and yes, uh, Kenobi, the show, Obi-Wan Kenobi is either out or coming out. It comes out May 27th. So this is a little early if you're listening to it right when it comes out. But uh, it is finally time to cover Ahsoka Tano, as we've long teased. And some of you have written in about. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, and this is the last Star Wars entry for a while, I promise, unless like something else I really have to talk about comes out, or if you have requests. But otherwise... Isn't there an Ahsoka show coming soon? There is. Right. And we will talk about it. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. now you're going to be really prepared. Um, <laughs> Yes, and as with these Star Wars ones, just because I felt like it was sort of, I don't know, not great of me to throw Samantha under the bus uh, and make her talk about something when I was the one that really wanted to talk about it, I'm going to run through this. <laughs> and if you have any questions, hey, I love it. just let me know. <laughs> I love it. All right. So, Ahsoka Tano is a Force-sensitive Tortuga woman who was the one-time Jedi Padawan to Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader. Uh, she's a dual lightsaber user. Uh, she has two white lightsabers, which is actually interesting. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But um, she also uses reverse grip. Uh, and the the headdress she wears denotes the skills that she has. It's kind of like a warrior. Uh, you have to do that. You have to earn that through being a warrior. Many call her a gray Jedi, as in she's not like total light user, not a dark user. But kind of a gray in between. She was first introduced in the animated show Star Wars The Clone Wars, which first debuted in 2008 and takes place between the films Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. And shortly after, she was sort of famously a really hated character at first. She went from somebody everyone hated to a character that was beloved by fans. You can find whole YouTube videos about it and essays about how it happened. And you... I, you know, I recommend it if you're at all interested. But there is a lot of information out there about how that happened. Rosario Dawson plays her in live-action Star Wars media, including The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, and, yes, the upcoming show, Ahsoka. She is also featured in E.K. Johnson's book, Star Wars Ahsoka. Creator and writer Dave Filoni and George Lucas wanted a prominent female Jedi to appeal to girls. And that was where kind of the impetus for Ahsoka and yeah, they just kind of made big headlines that they're filming Ahsoka right now. They just started filming. Interesting stuff about the name. George Lucas originally wanted the name to be Ashla, which he describes as the light side of the Force. However, they pivoted to Ahsoka, perhaps after Ahsoka the Great, who was an emperor of India during the 3rd century BCE, who, legend has it, personally decapitated 500 of his ministers, burned 500 concubines alive, and built a torture chamber called Ahsoka's Hell that people allegedly said was so sadistic, Ahsoka personally went to hell to learn how to make it. Ahsoka started a war that resulted in 100,000 casualties, and the violence reached such a level that Ahsoka converted to Buddhism, notably the inspiration for Jediism. Um, Ahsoka became known as Ahsoka the Righteous. People think the overall influence of this figure in the story is... is as someone who witnessed evil and turned away from war, which is kind of what happens. And apparently George Lucas really lobbied for Rosario Dawson to play. He really wanted her to play it. And also allegedly her first design was high-heeled boots and a pleated skirt. So I'm glad that kind of went a different way. I mm -hmm. guess it could have worked, but yeah. <laughs> but why? But why? Exactly. I'm Yeah. I like the direction they went. So... Let's get into the history. 
By the age of three, Ahsoka started showing signs of force sensitivity. Jedi Master Plo Koon was sent to investigate, uh, though he was intercepted by an imposter who almost enslaved Ahsoka, but Plo Koon arrived in time and took her to the Jedi Temple and Coruscant for training. Um, at the onset of the Clone Wars, Grand Master Yoda assigned her to be Anakin Skywalker's Padawan, who definitely, he definitely didn't want a Padawan and tried to pass her off to Obi-Wan. Uh, <laughs> so I do take her. Anakin called her Snips in acknowledgement that she is a lot like him. Um, and by the way, Yoda hoped mentoring Ahsoka would mellow Anakin out and no, nope, it did not. Uh, their relationship started off a bit rocky. Ahsoka was eager to prove herself why Anakin was reckless, but over time, they came to work really well together and they really respected each other. On top of that, she earned the title of commander in the Grand Army of the Republic, and through that, the respect of the clone army, in particular, that of Captain Rex of the 501st, the 501st, who became something of a mentor to her. Um, she disobeyed orders in her first assignment as leader and lost an entire squadron of pilots, but she rebounded from this loss and was key in winning the Battle of Ryloth. I love that some of this is just like washing over people's heads. Like, what? Um, it's all a thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you get the basic premise. You get there. Uh, yeah. As a Padawan, uh, she dealt with the Sith apprentice Ventress, bounty hunters like Cad Bane, and at one point died, but was brought back to life by the personification of the light side of the Force. Uh, who sacrificed herself to save Ahsoka. And that episode is like very strange, but essentially that was not good for what is to come. <laughs> um, anyway, she helped train Saw Gerrera and his sister, worked with Chewbacca to escape a planet where people are hunted for sport, and helped some Jedi younglings escape from their captors. However, she was framed for a bombing at the Jedi Temple hangar and for a few murders on top of that. She managed to escape into the underworld of Coruscant and partners with Ventress to clear her slash their names. Uh, eventually, Ahsoka was detained and banished from the Jedi Order. Anakin, with the help of Padme, who was a good friend of Ahsoka's, was determined to prove her innocence. Uh, and he uncovered the true culprit was Padawan Barris Afi, a friend of Ahsoka's. Uh, and fan fiction tells me they were in love. But anyway... Um, through this, Ahsoka was not convicted, and Ahsoka was invited by the Jedi High Council to rejoin the Order, but she refused because she was hurt and disillusioned. Anakin begs her to stay, but she walks away down the steps of the Jedi Temple, and you're like, no, because he's even more isolated. Oh, gosh. Uh, and you do see an interesting perspective from her time as she's an outcast hearing about people's feelings on the war, the Je Jedi, Coruscant, etc. I feel like she might have died had she stayed. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, He killed everyone. Knows? Well, and then it's so tragic because he made her a promise and he said, I will never let anyone hurt you. Oof. And you're like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Lies. It's very sad. It's very sad. She did briefly come back to work with the Republic on the Siege of Mandalore. She asked for the help of Anakin and Obi-Wan after a tense reunion, but they were on their way to save Chancellor Palpatine, who had been kidnapped. They sent a battalion of some clones with her instead, and she faced off with Darth Maul, who was in possession of the Darksaber and the ruler of Mandalore, and she bested and captured him. Shortly after this, though, Order 66 was enacted, which is when the clones turned and all the Jedi because of chips in their heads. Um, and so Ahsoka, who was really good friends with most of the clones in her battalion, was attacked by them. She is able to free Rex from the chip control, uh, at least. Maul directs the ship they are on uh, to crash, and Ahsoka erects grave markers for the fallen clones, leaving her lightsabers behind so it looks like she uh, had died too, and then goes into hiding. Darth Vader finds this space of her supposed death and stares at it. And it's like, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but then we move into the next phase of her, her time 
in her life. Uh, with the rise of the empire, Ahsoka proved instrumental in organizing rebel cells. She joined Bell Organa's burgeoning movement against the empire, and as part of this, she rose up to manage the intelligence network under the code name Fulcrum. She provided information to the rebels, including Harris and Dula and the Ghost Crew, who she took a particular interest in due to uh, Jedi Kanan Jarrus and his Padawan Ezra Bridger. She also briefly crossed paths with Leia Organa. Uh, she reunited with Rex and confronted Imperial Inquisitors and Darth Vader, who, unbeknownst to her, was Anakin Skywalker. During her duel with him on Malachor, she was believed to have died. But... In a plotline that may have broken the Star Wars universe, and I'm pretty sure slash terrified is going to come back, perhaps in this Obi-Wan show, uh, she was saved from death by an Ezra Bridger from the future. Okay, so in the so-called World Between Worlds, she confronted Darth Sidious Emperor Palpatine, uh, who wanted to control this dimension and return to her time and promised Ezra she'd find him in the future. <laughs> Uh, don't think about it too hard. It hurts your brain, I promise. Once the Galactic Civil War came to an end, she joined up with Sabine Wren, who we just did an episode on, uh, to find Ezra. To that end, we see her in The Mandalorian, uh, the show, which was an episode that almost crashed Disney Plus, by the way. She is searching for information on Grand Admiral Thrawn, who Ezra disappeared with, and who's one of the main villains of the Legends universe, and now I guess also the Disney canon, whatever. Uh, she worked alongside the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and refused to train Baby Yoda slash Grogu due to his attachment to Din and the darkness she sensed within him. Later, she visited Luke Skywalker's Jedi Temple and Book of Boba Fett and once again warned Din about the dangers of attachment and the difference between Mandalorian foundlings and Jedi Padawans, which is interesting because she knows a lot about both. And don't even talk to me about how they introduced Luke and Ahsoka off screen because I'm still salty as hell about it. I'm okay, so wait. mad. Did you explain that to me? Because I feel like you did explain that to me. What? That they met off screen. No! No, they just were like, oh, I guess we know each other now. Oh, I'm so, so that's, mad. That's what you're saying. They don't have a plot line. They just sent moving on with it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, there wasn't maybe a like, oh, the hi. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I've been, I'm so mad about it. I was like <laughs> waiting for this. And then, I never thought it would happen. And then for it to happen like that? Yep. No. Did you see the recent picture, though? Of oh, uh, Mark no. Hamill, Grogu, the stand-in, Rosario Dawson? I did not see it. Oh, I probably I'll see it to you. was like, my heart was broken. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do think, like, if we, if this episode, if I wanted it to go on and on, I would talk, like, I would talk about the trauma here of her probably seeing what happened to Anakin and Darth Vader and being so, like, no attachments is not good. <laughs> Very bad. Uh, she did also join several Jedi voices in Rise of Skywalker when Rey reached out to them in her battle against Palpatine, which suggests she is dead by this point because they're Force Ghost. However, creator Dave Filoni teased that this is not the case, and I, that's a heavy sigh from me because I'm so tired of them killing off somebody and then bringing them back. Stop it. Um, <laughs> anyway, who? Uh, she is a really interesting character, and I like uh, in Clone Wars, she kind of, she did become the focus, and like Anakin was the side character. And so I thought that was an interesting way to do it, because you as the viewer know what's going on with him and all the stuff, and like their final conversation is pretty upbeat, or at least one of their final conversations, not the last one, but you see it through her eyes, and then to have... I've seen things that kind of bother me about how, like, if only she hadn't left. They do that with Padme, too. If only she hadn't done this, he wouldn't have turned. He still did it. Like, I get it, but it's not up to her to keep him from doing what... She was his student. Right. That's the thing. It's like, I don't know if anything would have changed. I know that this is a buildup of things, but he also had someone, like, digging into his brain. Right. Right. And then there were a lot of failures in the system and with other characters, but it's not like her walking away because she felt betrayed is like, oh, well, it's her fault. No. 
I'm also ki- kind of, I'm intrigued what they're going to do with the show. Because I feel like her live action version and her kind of cartoon animated version don't necessarily match. And there's a lot of years in between that. So maybe they'll explain why she's she seems to be a bit, I mean, it could just be Darth Vader, but she seems to be a lot more like cynical uh, and darker. She still has kind of a lightness to her, but I'll, I'll be curious to see how that goes. Well, gosh, now I just want to talk about this trauma so much, but all right, this is it for now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative if you're interested in this character who has become very beloved. And yeah, I hope that you enjoy the show. Um, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll revisit it in the future. <laughs> in the meantime, thanks as always for letting me have this space to just nerd out. Um, and if you have any suggestions for future fictional women, we would love to hear them. You can email us at stephanieandmomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at Mom Stuff Podcast or on Instagram at Stuff I've Never Told You. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Thank you, Christina. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I've Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. <laughs> 